all right i decided to go ahead and show a little bit of the uh working on the inside of this mouth here uh, but once it gets closer to fit finish it'll be tight so i probably won't show much of that but i will show you that after been kind of studying it for a day or two looking at some uh reference photos and uh i think i got a pretty good idea of what it needs to look like what are you doing what are you doing blaze huh? what are you doing blaze what are you doing buddy what are you doing buddy Kind of drawing in the structure of the mouth inside of the mouth here just so i can kind of i mean I'm, i've got to grind it down more but this will just kind of keep my keep it straight in my head where i need to be aware of and not to take too much off How you doing, Blaze? How you doing, buddy? Y'all meet Blaze. This is my buddy. This is my buddy. This is a Weimaraner we got from uh, a rescue. My wife found him from a rescue up in the northern part of the state. He actually come from Texas. Um, he belonged to an elderly couple. And I, my understanding was the, the wife developed an allergy to him and couldn't they couldn't keep him. So they took him to a uh, local rescue, couldn't find anybody that would take him, and the local rescue took him. And then uh, they shipped him to a Weimaraner rescue here in Arkansas. And my wife found him online. And... Uh, He's been a super good dog. He's full-blooded, registered. Uh, he's six years old. And uh, he has taken to us. Ain't that what? Ain't that right, Blaze? Huh? Ain't that right? Ain't that right? But he's just super good dog. He is just, he's well-mannered. Came to his house broke. That was a plus. <laughs> He wants to be in your face all the time. I think that's the nature of Weimaraners. They gotta be close and touching all the time. But he's a smart boy. Just need to get him leash broke. I think they don't, they never walk him on a leash. My wife intends to, um, she likes to hike a lot, so she intends to take him hiking with her. But he's gotta get used to a leash. He won't like it much. He's getting better, aren't you, buddy? My other old dog, I, don't, I know some of you may have seen it. This little mutt we had, he was uh, about 14 and uh, he passed away a, a month or so ago. Sadly, he was old. Kind of expecting it, but it doesn't make it any easier. But, um,. Uh, He was blind. Just been with us for a long time. All right, so I'm looking at some reference photos here of the um, interior of this mouth. And 
this is the one I'm kind of interested in here. Where it meets, where this part here will meet the gullet. And I actually think I have to go a little farther back into this part here. So I'm going to kind of sneak up on that and not try to take it all off at one time. All right, I got most of the mouth detail done. Most of it's gonna be hidden, so I didn't go into high detail in there. So most of it will be hidden. Most of what's gonna be seen is right at the mouth here. So the tongue and then the teeth and a little bit of the structure, maybe a little bit of the gullet if you look down in there. So, but that's pretty much done. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start putting the uh, fin rays in the tail and then um, then I'll be done with this part and I'm going to go start uh, burning the scales on. All right, I've started the scales. While I have a kind of a weird scale pattern that that kind of goes kind of goes up, most fish it like bass and crappie, it's it's an even goes back, but on the walleye they kind of go up at an angle. So I've drawn out some uh, reference lines here to kind of help me start and so instead of going straight up and down like I normally would I'm going at a at an angle here so I get I got a little row here started just to try it out and this is one of my homemade scale tips Oops. This is going to be my show side. So I'm going to start on the non show side <laughs> to get some practice at it. I got some scrap wood that I. 
started going just Did I check the heat settings? Now just go up to the lateral line because the scales from the lateral line up are a little bit smaller than the body scales and they'll also get smaller like from here forward on the belly and then on the top of the head they get smaller as it gets down to the front of the head and they'll also get smaller down on the end of the tail section here so but I've got several sizes that I'll go down to as I get closer to that and I've just got enough heat just to it was a little bit too hot up here but I just got the heat turned up just enough to make an impression in it What I've learned in the past, I had the tendency to go too deep with the scales. And I don't have to go as deep as I always think I do. So, I'm going to turn the camera off and uh, get started on this and I'll be back with you in a few minutes as I get more done. All right, one side down, one to go. I got a little off on these scales up here. Like I say, this is the uh, non-show side, so hopefully that I can keep them a little straighter on the other side. It did look good here, but I kind of lost it down here, and I just screwed this one up here all together. Looks good right down through here. But they're all out of line up here. But I'll get started on the other side here. I try to stay off the lateral line. I don't go all the way to it because I'd like to tie in because the scales are supposed to follow the lateral line splits the scale so I like to try to tie those in once I get the, the bulk of it down then I come in and, I, and then I tie in to the lateral line And I've learned once I get going, if I watch that scale in front of me, going this way, it's easier to keep them in line. Same with the belly. I don't 
go all the way over I'll, I'll tie into those as I get closer I can probably go a little farther here so I'll uh, I'll do the rest of these off camera so, so, I don't, so you don't sit and watch it I have to sit and watch the whole thing uh, and then I'll be back in a minute to show you the uh, progress all right that's got me done for the scales uh, still need to put a little bit on the cheek here after I put the head back on but I can do that later um, and then I still had to put the lateral line in here like I did over here I'm going to do all that off camera though um, and then, then I'm about to start on uh, putting the burning the detail in the tail here so let me get the camera turned around and get started on that. I won't show all this just because it's uh, it's going to take a long time. So I bet I'll show a little bit. I got the shape patterns of the rays in the tails. I just need to put the final detail of the rays in. Finally getting a little afternoon shower. I hope it comes down a little bit longer. It's been so dry and hot and humid here. Golly, it's been horrible. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna stop here for today. I think the video, I think it's running a little bit long, so I'm gonna stop. I got the tail detail done. All the, the fans are detailed in. I was gonna mount them in this, in this uh, part but I think I'm gonna wait uh, like I said it's running along I still need to paint the inside of the mouth and I got a pretty cool deal with teeth to add to it and I'll show you that in part five um, I'm not gonna show you now <laughs> uh, but I think it's gonna be pretty cool uh, anyway um, so part five can be adding the fins um, mounting the head back on and probably sealing it and mounting the eyes um, and then it'll be ready for painting and I've got to at some point here start on the habitat base for it uh, I ain't even started that yet and one of the things they harped on in the seminars um, 
was to uh, do the base first <laughs> and then put your fish on it, but I haven't done it. Anyway, um, I'll get something done. But uh, appreciate y'all watching, and if you haven't, please subscribe. And uh, if you like the videos, please give me a thumbs up. Any suggestions you may have, again, please just leave them in the comment section for me below. And I will see y'all on part five.